Well, God morning, family. How we doing? Good morning, God, son. I tell you what, it's been a while since I've been in this sanctuary delivering a message. I can I thought about it when I was when I was working this message, and I realized this it's been four weeks since I delivered a message here. And man, no wonder I've been feeling off. I gotta tell you, um, if you're at the community service, obviously you see me there. My bride and I had the opportunity um, to take a couple a couple of the Sundays off um, and, and have a little vacation time and recuperate and um, I am refreshed and glad to be home. And so I am so excited for all of you being here, the, the faces that are here. Some of you see, you were here the last couple of weeks and I wasn't, so I didn't even see you then. Some of you have been to Tuesday nights, some have not. And so I got to see some of you, but I haven't seen some of you. And so I'm just glad to see every smiley face that's in here right now. And uh, would you just join me as we go to our Papa in prayer? Papa, uh, we're here, dear Lord, because you brought us here. We're here because you put it upon our hearts to be here. We're here because you've called us, and Lord, we, you called this church here, you called this family here, and today, dear Lord, in this moment in time, you have a message prepared for us, and Lord, we ask that you would deliver that message, deliver it full force into us, dear Lord, that I would stay out of the way, strictly use me as a conduit. I am nothing but a conduit, dear Lord, and, and so keep me out of the way. Don't allow me to soil anything that you have prepared for this family today. Dear Lord, I ask that your spirit would break open the hearts of the people here today, and that our lives would be changed in ways that they've never been changed before, and to extents that they haven't been changed before. And Lord, that our relationship with you is stronger than it has ever been before when we are through with this message today. And when we're through with this message today, I ask that you help us take it home with us, take it out into the world with us where it's actually supposed to be used not just learn here and left here, or yet instead learn here and take it and share it. And so, Lord, we just ask for your hand upon this message. We ask for your hand upon this family. We, we thank you. We thank you for all that you've already done and the amazing things you have in store for us. And we pray these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I want to start our day out with a pretty deep question. Okay? Can deep and real forgiveness of enemies be possible? Is deep and real forgiveness of enemies possible? Now, it's easy to forgive your loved one. It's easy to forgive that person who's close to you, that person you work with every day, who you're best buds with. It's easy to forgive. Is it possible to have deep and real forgiveness for our enemies? And if you were at the community service the other day, a couple weeks back, then you heard me talk about how we're to love and pray for our enemies. That's not pray for them as in they'll burst into a ball of flame. That's pray for them as in God has his hand on them and through, works through them. Right? And so it's to pray and love our enemies. So is deep, real forgiveness possible for our enemies? Well, let's go to 1994. If you remember 1994, there was a massacre, the worst massacre in modern history happened in a little African nation called Rwanda. There was a genocide that went on. In 100 days, 800,000 men, women, and children were slaughtered by their neighbors. By their neighbors, folks. They happened to be of different tribes, but tribe was slaughtering tribe. Okay? 800,000, and it didn't stop there. That 100 days, they slaughtered 800,000, but the hate, the anger, the animosity, the unforgiveness continued on well years after that. Years after that. Some of it probably is not healed yet today. But is it possible through this that we would be able to see real, deep, true forgiveness? Apparently we can because I'm going to share with you the story of a survivor. Her name was Avasta. And she had a child with her. They were in their home. And their neighbor, Godfrey, burnt their house down on them. They escaped. They escaped and survived. But he burnt their house down, trying to burn them alive while they were in their home. Kind of a vicious little act, right? A few years later, Godfrey got back out of he got out of prison and he came back to their village. When he came back to the village, the first place he went was to Avasta to ask her for forgiveness. Let me 
me share with you what Navasa told the New York Times. I used to hate him. When he came to my house and knelt down before me and asked for forgiveness, I was moved with his sincerity. Now, if I cry for help, he comes to the rescue. When I face any issue, I call on him. I think deep, real, true forgiveness is possible in all situations. I want you to reinforce that for me. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, real forgiveness is possible. This morning we're finishing up our series in the chat. In the movie, Mac has experienced some horrific, unimaginable personal tragedy. He's, it, it shook him to the core. It's rattled his faith, it's rattled his trust in humanity, it's rattled his trust in God. There's a whole lot of unforgiveness involved with Mac. He goes into a deep state of depression, and he receives this mysterious invitation to return to the shack where his tragedy became a reality. Mac accepts that invitation. He returns to the shack and him, he comes to know God in a way that he has never known God and has changed forever. Here's the thing, folks. This series is about life change. The purpose of this series is life change. My prayer through this entire series has been that there will be change in each and every person's life who hears the messages whether it was me delivering before Herman, doesn't matter, but that God would do what only God can do through this series, that our lives would never ever be the same as what they were when we walked in the door the first day of this series. That our hearts would be changed in ways that we never imagined possible. Everyone's got some stuff. Everyone's got things we're going through. Everyone's got things we're dealing with. And my prayer is that our lives are changed in a way that the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us down a path we never thought imaginable. In the video, we're getting ready to watch the video, but Max says, he asks, so, he, and he's asking God, he says, so, you just let him get away with it? Kind of like, well, don't you realize how painful they were for me? Come on, are you kidding me? I hate them. Why are you letting them get away with it? And you're just going to let it go, aren't you, God? That's kind of the way that question comes out. That's the way it comes across. Kind of one of the deals where he says, do you want me to forgive who? Seriously? Are you kidding me? Forgive who? Let's watch this movie. Let's turn this video for a place. You, you just let him get away with it. Nobody gets away with anything. Everything bears consequences. What he did was horrible. I'm not asking you to excuse what he did. I'm asking you to trust me, to do what's right, and to know what's best. And then what? Forgiveness doesn't establish your relationship. It's just about letting go of each other.
Galatians 6, verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. And remember that man part isn't just the guys, you know. It's, it's everybody. Right? A person reaps what they sow, so when you're reaping that sowed seed of bitterness, or when you're sowing that seed of bitterness, remember what you're going to reap. When you're seed, sowing that seed of hate, remember what you're going to reap. When you're sowing that seed of love, remember. We want people to suffer. We want them to feel exactly what we felt, right? We, we think that's the right thing. That's our human nature says that we, no, they should suffer as much as I've suffered. They should go through what I went through. And God says, you know what? We're supposed to forgive them. We're supposed to forgive them. Remember, this is an interactive series, right? So I want you to turn to your neighbor and let them know God's ways are different than my ways. When we've been wrong, we've got a choice. When someone has transgressed against us, we have a choice. We can choose to hold on to them by the throat, demand justice as we see it, or we can choose to show mercy as God asks us to do. See, Mercy is when God holds back what we deserve when we've done something wrong. Mercy is God forgiving us. Grace is getting the blessings we don't deserve, and mercy is not getting the punishment we do deserve. But isn't that the way that we are? So it's, it's funny how we are. Human nature is what? It's like, oh, yeah, that's good stuff, and I know I didn't do what I was supposed to do, but come on, bless me, bless me, bless me. Yet when we do something to someone else, it's like, well, but it wasn't really that bad, and I shouldn't really have to pay for that. There should be no consequence. Come on, it's just the one time. We want all the blessings. We don't want any of the responsibility, any of the consequences. Yet God says there's consequences for everything, for every sin. When it comes to our relationship with God or Jesus, whichever way you want to look at it, when it comes to our relationship with God and Jesus, just remember, we will always be the greater debtor. We are always the greater debtor. No matter what we've gone through, no matter what, what someone has done to us, what we have done to Jesus Christ was far more than what anyone has we did to Jesus Christ was far more. And someone said, well, but I didn't do I wasn't even alive 2,000 years ago. Guess what? The human race was. No matter what we did, no matter what, it's always going to be worse. What we've done to Jesus is always worse than what we've received from somebody else. And we just have to remember that when it comes to, are we supposed to forgive or are we not supposed to forgive? How can I he hung on a tree for you and for me. For all the stuff we do. In Matthew 18, uh, Peter asks a question. He asks Jesus, he says, So, Lord, how many times do I need to forgive my enemy? Right now, Peter, he thinks he's kind of a stud in this whole thing. He thinks God's about to find, or Jesus is about to find out how holy I really am. He's going to find out how much I've really, really learned. Because you know what? According to Mosaic law, the law that God gave to Moses to give to the the, the Israelites, according to Mosaic law, had to forgive three times for any given sin. If if they if if you were called upon to forgive a fourth time, it was up to you. Do it if you want, don't if you don't want, that's up to you. But you have to forgive three times according to Mosaic law. So Peter says, hey, here's the thing. Three and three. Let's go six times. And he said, oh, well, wait a minute. I think, you know what, there's seven days in the week. Let's just do one forgiveness each day of the week. At the end of the week, we're done. Jesus will think this is really cool and I've really learned my lessons. Now, obviously, I'm injecting what I think through Peter's mind. Because our Bible doesn't tell us what Peter said or what Peter's thoughts were behind this. The fact is, he went over double the times of, according to Mosaic law that he should forgive the people. And I love 
what Jesus said to him. He wasn't exactly, totally, completely enamored and impressed by what Peter said. Because in Matthew 18, verse 21, 22, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus responded, Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Now that's under the NIV translation. Now if you go to the NLT, and it, and it depends which translation you look at, NLT says seventy times seven, which is four hundred and ninety times. Now I don't know which translation had it, got it exactly right according to the original language. But the reality of it is, if you're keeping track up to 77 times for every sin that anyone that you feel anyone has ever transgressed against you, if you're keeping track, you've got a real problem. And that's what Jesus was saying. Hey, it's not about the numbers. It's not about the three times, seven times, seven, 77 times, or 490 times. It's not about that. It's about forgiving. Just forgive them. That's what we request of you. We as in He and God. That's what the requirement is, is forgiveness and love. It's not about those numbers. And then he follows it up with this. He follows it up with a parable. The parable of the king who forgave, who was bringing the accounts to due, bringing all the accounts to due. And the king brings in a person who owed him in the millions, yes, millions, with the S on the end, in the millions of current dollars. He required the account to come full, to come, come to be balanced. The man like, I can't do it. And, and the king says, fine, then your family will be sold into slavery, your land will be sold, you'll be thrown in prison until the debt's paid. The man begs him not to do this to him. And the king had mercy on him and cleared the debt. Forgave millions of dollars. Now you want to talk about generous. That's some generous forgiveness, isn't it? So the man, he's all the lady, he's like, woohoo! Going out of hand, we're partying down, right? We're going running out in the street, dancing and singing. Runs into a gentleman who owed him two thousand dollars current debt. Two thousand dollars. He grabs him by the throat and says, pay up, pay up now. The debt is to be cleared. And the man begs him and asks him, I can't, I can't, I can't pay it. And so the servant who was forgiven the millions throws a servant who owed 2,000 into prison until the debt could be cleared. You know, say the people who saw this were not impressed and went and told the king. The king called the man back and said, you wicked evil servant. I forgive you millions and you're worried about 2,000? And he reinstated the debt, sold the family into slavery, sold the land through the man in prison until he could repay the debt, which, by the way, could never, ever, in that time, could not have been paid off in 10 lifetimes. So he's never going to pay it off. He's in prison forever because he couldn't forgive a $2,000 debt. And Jesus follows it up with this. Matthew 18, verse 35 says, This is how my heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from the heart. All the things all we got to do is love and forgive and do what God calls to do. All we have to do is forgive. And some of you are saying that's not all we have to do. Come on, dude. Get with it. You know what's happened to me, or you don't know what's happened to me. You have no idea the pain I'm going through. You have no idea the struggles I'm going through. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what they did. I don't, but God does. And he says, guess what? Forgive from the heart. Forgive from the heart. In fact, Jesus' uh, uh, um, response is, he's, he's just saying, oh yeah, there's love. And if we love God, if we truly love God, we should be able to love our fellow person. It shouldn't even be a question. It might stink going through some of that, but it shouldn't be a question whether you should or should not forgive them and whether you will or will not forgive them. See, forgiveness is where justice and mercy kiss. See, justice would say the servant should have been thrown in prison the first time. 
Yet mercy said, I'll forgive it. And that's true whether it's God forgiving you and me, or whether it's us forgiving our enemy. It doesn't matter. Forgiveness is when mercy and justice kiss. I know it's not easy going through stuff. I know. I know what Mac went through. If it was my little girl who had been murdered, and the Lord only knows whatever else might have happened to that poor child. If it was my little girl or before my grandchildren, I know it would be a battle. But ultimately, ultimately, it's I have to forgive. I have to release it to God and let Him be the judge instead of me. It's not my place. And I need to pray for that person, for God to do the work in them that He can do in them. We say we want to be the one to judge. We, we feel that we're the ones who are going to judge appropriately and that God can't judge them the way that they should have been judged. Because the reality of it is it's either we trust God or we don't trust God. God says there will be consequences for all sins. Do we believe that the consequence will be appropriate? But I think if it's God's consequence, I think it's appropriate as it's ever going to get. In fact, I know it's as appropriate as it's ever going to get. It doesn't make it easy. It doesn't mean it's simple. It means it's right and righteous. Do you trust God? God, if you truly love God, if you are truly reflecting Jesus Christ and serving our God, you'll forgive. Is your heart God's heart or not? It's the reality of it. And it sucks. I know. Oh, Pastor said that word again. Yeah, he did. You know, I know it, it, it's just, it's not any, it's not a cool thing, it's not a, a fun time. But when we do it with God's heart, when we do it with the heart that God intended for us to have, guess what? It's freeing. It will free you. See, Jesus came to free the sinner. He free, came to free the prisoner. And that's exactly what he did. And it's up to us to allow him to free the sinner. You know what? We, 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 for unforgiveness, you know what that's like? It's like drinking poison and going, I hope you die now. I chug it. You gotta die. Seems dumb, don't it? But that's what it is. It's a black poison that gets into your soul and all it does is deteriorate, rot, and poison you. Give it up. Give the, for give the forgiveness and let Jesus pay the price. Let God deal with the consequences because it's not ours to have. We're not to be judged. He's the judge. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ can save that person. You cannot. You and I can't do it. We have to square up whether we trust God or not. Each and every one of us individually has to square up. Do you trust God or do you not trust God? Am I going to live my life my way because I don't trust God to, live, to, to give me the life I deserve? Or are you going to trust God and say, you know what, Lord, I am following you. You are the way. Jesus is the narrow gate. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Do you trust Him to be that? What's my problem? I want you to watch this. Uh, we have another video clip, short, short one. Um, it was shared with me by another pastor who uh, I happen to be very good friends with. And um, he uses it in, in a, it's part of a teaching video and it's part of a teaching series. And this is just a short little clip because I think Rob Bell explains this really, really well. And so I'd like you to watch this. Have you ever heard somebody say that like because of something that was done to them, they've been like, you know what? You don't understand. What they did to me is so horrible, I will never forgive them. I can't forgive them for what they did. But like, what if God said that? 
whatever wrong was done to any of us, God saw it. In this book of Romans, chapter 12, the writer says, Don't take revenge, but leave room for God. Which is, it's like a, it's like a nice idea, but it isn't very easy to do.
pray for God to break their heart as well. Pray for God to do what only God can do in their heart as well. And give them forgiveness. Join us with the Lord, our Father. Dear Lord, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this message this day, this opportunity, dear Lord. Lord, today we, we start anew. We must start anew. Father, we thank you so much. And I understand there's some folks in here that they, they really don't, they don't struggle with unforgiveness. I got that. There are other folks in here who are struggling really hard with it. And it's not their fault. It's, it is what it is. But help them to choose. Choose to let their heart be tilled back up and let forgiveness, love, mercy be planted into those that soil of their heart, dear Lord. As the Holy Spirit's grinding their heart up right now, Lord, Help them to plant that seed and help them to be willing to receive the seed and not put the, the, the roundup of sin upon that seed. Lord, please guide us as we come to your table and guide us as we go back down into the world. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.